so it's important. All I see is like a hand. <laughs> okay, we're good now. You're all adjusted. Y'all settled in. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the Pum Pum Passe Wat Guan. Good morning, good morning. We are here for episode 19 of the Pum Pum Chronicles, and I have a special guest with me. Mr. Orlando Roy. So I'm gonna let you talk about all your accolades and let people who ask you to let people know who you are because I'm sure you could do that far better than I can. <sighs> all my accolades, where do I start? <laughs> okay. um, I am a personal trainer with my own brand called Five Star Games. Nice. I am the manager of the So Shameless podcast. Very nice. I have my own podcast with my co-host, Funny Julius, called Hello, White People. Okay. I am in music journalism, um, where I started my own music series, where I interview artists, producers, videographers, battle rappers, and DJs about their part in how songs are created or nice. lyrics are created. That is called Beyond the Bar Music, and you can find that on YouTube at Beyond the Bar Music. Um, and I am a emergency responder for the MTA in New York City. You're just like all kind. When do you sleep? <laughs> like, I you do so fun. much stuff. Oh, and I have an OnlyFans. OnlyFans.com backslash Dear Orlando Roy. That's very impressive. So when do you find time to sleep, sir? Um, I sleep. I, I do periodic naps, really. So <laughs> I might get maybe five hours of sleep uh, at night and then maybe another two to three hours um, in the morning. Okay. And I'll always do two things at once. Okay. Minimum, at least. So. And this is a great visual for my uh, female followers when I post this video on YouTube <laughs> because, you know, you have the, like the, the chest tats going on and gotta love a man that's comfortable wearing a bonnet first thing in the morning. I know we, we talked and you're like, yeah, I'm good. Just go ahead and videotape it. So it's always a nice thing. Last night was wash night. So <laughs> that's cool. Um, and of course, I'm your host, AJ Badass Jones. You can find me on my social media platforms, the Pum Pum Chronicles podcast on Instagram and TPP Chronicles on Twitter. I'm also on YouTube with the, uh, the Pum Pum Chronicles podcast. And you can follow my personal page at badass underscore Jones underscore. And of course, all this info will be repeated at the end so you can take down this information. So you and I are going to have a discussion today about male pleasure, male sexuality, male masturbation, and all the taboos that surround those wonderful topics. Um, because recently my girlfriend, Nick, um, one of the proprietors of Erotic Boudoir had sent you a male satisfier. Yes. Shout out to Erotic Boudoir. My <laughs> yeah, shout out to Erotic Boudoir. Um, so the male satisfier, basically it's a, like a solid plastic tube that's like a pussy, correct? Um, somewhat. Okay, so you tell me. You tell me about it and tell me your experience with it. Yeah, it's more so like a solid plastic tube, but um, whereas it, it's not really meant for insertion, it's real oh, partial insertion where right. it only covers the head. Oh, and okay. The base of it is basically um, the controller, which controls the setting for the vibration. And it's literally like it's a, it's a vibrator. So it's a vibrator that only covers the head and stimulates the head only. So it's not meant to be a stroker. So you, you, you're you not able to like, let's say, push all the way. Right. You're not meant to fuck it. Thank you. <laughs> so it's not meant to go all the way down the shaft. It's more so just to create the stimulation or that sensation around the head. Yes. Okay. So was that the first time you've ever used a toy like that or a toy period? Yes and yes. Okay. So what was the experience like? Was it odd? Like, I know for women, I, we always have this conversation about vibrators versus dildos and, and the difference in the settings and the sensation. And we have one amount of contraptions that have beads and pearls and oscillation on, you know, tongues and little rabbits and all that kind of stuff on it. Right. But yeah. for, so it's kind of like the norm to think that a woman would use a vibrator, but for a man having that vibrating sensation on the head of your dick, how was that? Um, it was really interesting. I had to, I was, I was already open to using it, but I had to really relax my mind and mm -hmm. accept a new feeling of vibration on the head. Cause it's not something that I'm used to. Right. Um, I'm also more so a shaft stimulated 
type of person. Right. So, um, yeah, it, it was a slight adjustment, but it didn't take long to adjust and understand, like, okay, I have to be using it this way, and maybe I have to adjust my my um, thought process of uh, insertion. Mm-hmm. So instead of it being insertion, it just needs to be, like, um, I have to find the right setting. I have to put it on the head, and I have to just leave it there and let it do its thing. Um, because I am more of a shaft stimulated type of person, right? Um, using it multiple times, I find it's better to, um, I guess, masturbate and then use it closer to the end, so where, where more like a finisher. More, yeah, exactly. Okay. Finisher, okay. Where the head is more um, sensitive. Right. But um, which is the best part because w- when the head is so sensitive and like any little touch, um, basically like sets really, you off, really, <laughs> literally. <laughs> yeah. When I when I finally used it, um, when when I finally got to the point where I was able to come and it was still on. Yeah. Right before I came and when I came and after I came was the best part. Like I, I tell everybody, like I literally curled up into a ball. <laughs> And, like <laughs> fell forward on my bed. Like it was, it was an amazing feeling. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the way that you have it set, because you said that you're you're more of a shaft stroker. Mm-hmm. Um, it can you use it like in conjunction with stroking yourself? Okay. So like for example, if you're thinking about um, like if a woman is sucking your dick and she's focused on the head, but she's using her hands to stroke mm-hmm. the shaft. Can you as a man? do something similar to that where because you prefer the shaft stimulation, you would stroke your shaft and just have the satisfier at the head? Yes. Or is that like two? Oh, okay. Also. Mm-hmm. So how much trial and error did you go through to, to figure out like the right technique or the right combination to achieve the, the result that you wanted, like the, a proper result? Um, uh, not, not much really. Um, it's, yeah, you basically could use it like however you want. Like the first time I used it, I I kind of basically used it as if it was like a, um, a pocket pussy, right. but only my, only goes as far as my head. So I was like um, going back and forth instead of right. holding right there. And then another time I had it on the head and I was um, stimulating my shaft. And then another time I just used it more so at the end. So. It's pretty versatile, actually. Um, it's more versatile than I, I thought. It doesn't necessarily have to just be a place it on the head and let the um, let it vibrate. And then on top of that, it has a lot of different vibrating settings. So okay. that helped a lot also. Um, do you it, come inside of it? Yeah. Or do you has, pull it off? Yeah, it has, it a, has a reservoir. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, so it, it has a bunch of settings. Um, you find the right one and... I also find that it's more of like a, a lasting toy. It's not really a quick fix to get it over with kind of toy. Explain so, that to me. Um, I guess like within a when you you masturbate or you're using a pocket pussy, um, you you won't really be there long. But because it's is I guess you know um what feels well, you know your body yeah right so the point of it when it's just you by yourself is just to come unless you know for whatever reason you want to um stay a little longer but with that I, I don't find that it gets you to um it gets you to come like quickly in my opinion so it lasts a little bit longer you can enjoy the moment longer okay yeah. okay um so which, which is also new for me because i'm used to like oh man so the the point is to get it over with, but not right. So you nut like two, three it. minutes, and you go on your merry way. Whereas with this, yeah, I have time. Like a lighted candle, <laughs> <laughs> put on <laughs> some good music, myself. get a yeah. drink. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So is it? Do you do you think this is a toy that you'd be comfortable using with uh, an intimate partner, or is it something that's solely for your own pleasure? Yeah, I want to. I want to actually use it with a partner and see what okay. that experience is like. Have you talked to your friends, like your guy friends, about using? I don't know if that's like, because I know, like, as women, we talk about vibrators, we talk about toys and what have you. I don't know if that's kind of like a weird subject for you to talk about with other guys. And I know you've got your OnlyFans page. I'm sure you've marketed or put it out there that, you know, also, too, on Instagram, you've posted that 
you've used the male satisfier and I know that you had gotten some comments or feedback from people who, I don't know, they seem really homophobic about it, like, which is really strange to me because it's a toy that you're using with yourself. Like how, how is that remotely gay in any way, shape or form? Right. Um, well, surprisingly the feedback was a bit more positive than negative as in the <laughs> ratio. I thought, um, I thought it would have been the opposite. Um, which is us, actually also the reason why I started the OnlyFans because I wanted a space where I can review these toys yes. and it can be uh, very receptive. And then for the people that want to witness me demonstrating it, then I started the OnlyFans so they can have a place where they can see it like in their own private time. Right. Um, and yeah, as far as on yeah on Instagram, that's why I review it and I. Um, yeah, I review it and basically give the synopsis and my own experience with it and try to make it as much of an educational experience as I can. Um, but the that uh, that started the conversation. I didn't have the conversation first, and then I put out the review. But that started the conversation, and um, more men actually opened up and good. I was saying like, "Oh, this is very interesting," or they were interested and like they're happy that um, I'm actually having the conversation. And then mm -hmm. some that weren't interested in using it, they were like, "You know what? That might not be for me, but this is actually a very good video or a very good review, and what you're good. doing is actually very good." So hopefully, like with this happening, it would start up. Um, opening that 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 mentality to where maybe I'm not okay with this one when I'm watching right. these videos and I'm getting more comfortable and maybe there was is one toy that I they could come. They'll be wanting to try, right? Yeah. No, it's great that you've opened up that discussion because again, it's sort of like um, you know discussions around men and their emotions, discussions around you know men emotionally and mentally breaking down, discussions around anything that's not just straight fucking, like not straight dick and straight, you know, what I mean? or eating mm -hmm. pussy, like anything outside of that for men to have an opportunity to talk about. It seems like those spaces are really limited. So it's great that you've created that opportunity for them to be able to at least, if not join in the discussion, they're able to watch the video and maybe in their own personal space, they're able to think, okay, well, let me go online and look and see what's out there that could be of interest. And let me see if, you know, there's something small that I could talk, uh, start off with, you know, before I jump into the satisfier or a pocket pussy or, you know, letting them fleshy kind of pum pum that you put on the table and, yeah. you know, do your thing with, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to make sure it's a, I'm, I'm spreading awareness, comfort, and education. That's a beautiful thing. Say that again. Spreading awareness, comfort, and education. Okay. So for you, you know, like in terms of your level of comfort with masturbation, have you always been that way? Because I know like, so, so in the Caribbean, Black Caribbeans, Jamaicans, um, when little boys masturbate, like, okay, so my godson, his mom messaged me to tell me that he discovered his penis and he won't stop playing with it and he won't stop tugging it. And, you know, she's like, oh, it's so cute kind of thing. But I remember when she had my goddaughter, you know, when her goddaughter, my goddaughter started putting her hands down there and kind of like just cupping her vagina, it was like a whole big thing, you know? And she'd like hit her hands away from there and basically telling her that girls aren't supposed to touch themselves, it's not the same thing. Whereas when, when her son did it, my godson did it, it was cute because, you know, it's just a boy thing or whatever. So like, I know in the Caribbean, that's like a big, um, it's a big deal where boys are more so encouraged around their sexuality and, and certain things that they do are less taboo than when girls do it. So within like North America, being North American, being American, was that a thing growing up? Well, I'm actually not American. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Where are yeah, you from? I was born in Jamaica. Shut up. Up, come, we're gonna fight now. You didn't even <laughs> tell me that from before. Wow, big up yourself, Yadi. I yeah, knew yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> so then you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because even when I think about, like, you know, if like you take your son or your son is seen like rubbing up on a big woman or whatever, nobody has a problem with it. But if it's the flip side where it's a man that, you know, is dancing with a younger girl, like everybody wants to kill him, right? Sure. Did, so even with you being originally Jamaican and where you grew up, was that ever an issue? Like, was sexuality, was masturbation something that was considered taboo in your household? Um, in my household, uh, somewhat 
Well, yeah, yeah. It, it was basically the typical toxic Jamaican household, which yes. I grew up in. Yes. But I was always, I was always the kid who was curious, and where where normal structure would say walk straight and then turn right. Yes, I'd be curious about what's going on left. left. Yes, and that's how I always was. And luckily, I had an uncle when I was younger that when whenever I, like. I got to my like my teenage years or my preteen, and I would like have questions and be curious about things. Where my mom would like try to stifle and suffocate it. Mm-hmm. My uncle would want me to explore it and ask these questions, Good. so I have a better understanding. And I was like more aware at a younger age about sexuality and like the questions that I had and stuff like that. So I could um I could always thank him for that for for having me become like more comfortable with that. Um. And then I just always thought it was just a weird, a weird thing that so many of us do it. Like literally everybody indulges some indulges some way or another mm-hmm. in some kind of sexual activity. But it's it's is a scary thing to talk about. It literally yeah. like makes no no sense at all. Yeah. But um, I found that people usually wait for that one person to feel comfortable. Or that one person to say it's okay for them then to go along and say, "Oh well, I've been fi- finally I've been thinking about it and now right. I talk about it." Um, even even with women, the women that I deal with, because I'm so comfortable with myself, um, they've basically been stifled like all their life, like like you said, where they they've been grown and been told like, "Oh no, this is wrong" and stuff like yeah. that, and then going more so into society where they're being suffocated with their own sexual thoughts and sexual mentality and, and things of that sort. When they finally come to me and I'm sitting there I'm like comfortable with myself and I'm willing to talk about anything. And there's no judgment also when I speak yes. to anyone about yes. um, about how they feel or anything um, sexually or even their sexual preference. And then, so when a woman comes to me, they feel so much more comfortable to, to speak to me and, and so much more comfortable with um, our own sexual experience because now they feel like they can explore mm-hmm. um, exactly all the thoughts that they've had. So that that also trickles into why I wanted to get into educating about men having sex toys yes. because I feel like if now their mentality is more open to it, um, they can see how it feels to use a toy themselves. They're more open sexually. Yes it slightly changes their mind state on sex and and how to go about it. And then it'll trickle down to caring more about sex with their partner. And also open up communication, hopefully, with their partner. Exactly, which okay. then would create a better sexual experience for everyone to have. Absolutely. But that is my hope that it, that it happens. I'm sure that it will. It's Like you said, it, it sometimes it just takes that one person to start the process it takes that one person to show like hey look at me like i'm regular average joe you know and it's okay to have these kind of conversations it's okay to feel this type of way the problem is there's never that one person that starts it so you being the person that starts it especially when black men are looking at you as a strong virile black man they see that there's nothing wrong with that or there's nothing you know weird about it um in conversation in this day and age which i don't understand like we are on social media talking about all manners of fuckery except when it comes to matters of the heart or matters of intimacy you know with another person where it's just one-on-one like all of a sudden we can't talk about i didn't enjoy that or that was really great or can we try this next time or hey what do you think about incorporating xyz it's like we're so scared of those particular conversations it's bizarre but we'll have the conversations all the live long day with our group of girlfriends or we'll talk to our guy friends about a girl that we smashed or whatever the case may be but people one-on-one conversations is just not happening and it's I'm always baffled by that. Yeah, it, it, exactly. It literally makes no sense at all. And then whenever um, you are so open, they people tend to like put you in a box. So like I've always gotten the, oh, he's so comfortable with sexuality. He's got to be gay or he, mm-hmm. he's got to be bisexual mm-hmm. or um, there, there's got to be something with him that that I can't identify with. So that's the reason why he's like that. Right. It's like, no, I'm, I'm a black male. Um, straight i identify with being um a male so the a cisgendered male so yes. there literally is no 
reason why you can't be like this also. Right. <clears throat> so, but they label you in that way because it makes them more comfortable to some degree or other. And then also again, forces them to not have to deal with whatever exactly. they're wrestling with. Exactly. And then people will just know me, just know that I'm just a comfortable, I'm very comfortable with myself. So you, you really have no excuse not to be able to expand your mind. Right. Be able to think the way I do because we are just as relatable to each other. True. And, and it's not like I didn't I didn't grow up with a bunch of sisters, so that's why I'm more um more understanding to women. Um I didn't uh I'm not overly masculine, I'm not overly feminine in type of right. way. I just understand both parties. Like I'm into sports, like everything about me says just straight up cis straight male. Yeah. Right. Like straight male. But I'm just open to understanding and listening to everyone. Right. Or we should all just be able to do that, especially um, everyone that looks like me or can relate to me. So I'll ask you a question that I oftentimes get asked, which I never really understand. So maybe you can help me better understand it. When did you become so comfortable with yourself? When did you become so comfortable with your sexuality? Um, I've always been comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. um, I started this thing when I was probably in like the fourth grade where I was going to, I always said to myself, you know what, I'm going to choose every day to try and make myself be better than I was the day before. Really? Yeah. And I've stuck with that. Like, That's since, beautiful. Yeah. I stuck with it since the fourth grade. I can't remember how old I was, but I've done that every day. And then that started my, you know, short term goals, mid term goals, long term goals. And then yeah. I've always just like built myself to become a better person as as much as I can. And um with that I've gained like more confidence in myself mm -hmm. and and a lot of like self love. And then I didn't realize at that age that it would get to a point where I'm sitting here like, oh, I'm comfortable with myself and I can talk about these things. I didn't know that that's what I was breeding at the time. Right. But basically, like, that's how it started. And I'm very confident in myself. I know me as best as I can know me. And I'm very comfortable. So, yeah, it, it just trickles down to not like narcissism. Mm -hmm. but I, No, that's a completely different thing altogether. Exactly. What because the thing is, if you're a narcissist, you're not interested in any anything else really about everybody else, unless it directly comes right back to you and specifically benefits you. It's that's that's you're not take that out of your vocabulary. You're not yeah. that. Good. Well, I, I say that because people aren't used to seeing somebody like so confident and so right. sure about themselves. Right. Um. So they once again try to put you in a box and try to put you within a definition, um, and that's usually the one that that comes across. Okay. Um, so we're going to take a brief break and we're going to uh, do a commercial and then we are going to come back and chat to Mr. Orlando Roy, man of many talents. <laughs> if you're looking for that sexy something to satisfy all your pleasurable needs, then check out Erotic Boudoir at www.touchingbodymindandsoul. They carry the male satisfier, lube, and a multitude of other toys that will have you looking at self-care in a whole other light. And if you're looking for a psychologically dominating, behaviorally correcting, wax playing, hand spanking night of intimate and interactive safe techniques and fun, then join us as Erotic Boudoir presents the sensual art of impact play featuring the king of debauchery, King Hef. Saturday, March 14th, 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. in Philadelphia. For more tickets and information, click the Get Tickets tab below their bio on the page of Erotic Boudoir on Instagram. Happy shopping. And we're back. I, I'm sitting here thinking, like, in the back of my mind, I didn't know that you were Jamaican because now I feel like I want to speak a whole bunch of patois to you, but I'm going to behave myself. <laughs> Um, so we're back and, um, you and I were briefly chatting and so I was saying to you that there's a video that a friend of mine had posted on his social media where basically it's a man on his knees, bent forward in the doggy style position. His woman is on her knees behind him. She's eating his ass. She's stroking his dick. 
and you could hear him moaning and the pleasure that, you know, he's getting. There's a point even where she moves down and she's like licking his balls from behind and he puts his hand behind him and you can see that he's wearing bracelets. His hands are very slender. His body's very slender in comparison to hers. And the comment section went crazy with people saying that the man is gay because he likes his ass eaten. Um, women commenting that they would never do that to a man because if he needs that kind of pleasure, you know, there's something wrong with him. They went as far as to say that the woman had to be transgender. She couldn't be a real woman because no woman eats ass. And the comments just went on and on and on. And my friend who posted basically said, like, everyone is entitled to their opinion, but don't pass judgment on someone because it's not something that you enjoy and it's not something that you understand. The woman is a woman and the man is a man. There's nothing gay about the act that is happening between them because it's a woman and a man. But you still have people in society who will insist that any sort of anal play for a man is gay, period. I wanted to ask you what your thoughts are on that. Um, it, it's really so interesting how um, society moves its sheep because not too long ago, men like Ian ass was like so unheard of and so nasty. And so, right? Uh, but now it's just like pretty much normal. So, right. Like if you're a man and you don't eat a woman's ass, you're not like your skills are not up to par. Or, or you're you're missing out on this whole new venture of like pleasing your work. <laughs> right. So right. Just like you literally, when you see people like that, you just sit and wait for society or enough people to say, "Oh, I've ventured down this." Because what you're gonna get is you're gonna get the curious people first mm -hmm. that'll be like, "Oh, let me try it out," or someone to to um, what's the word I'm looking for? Someone to convince them to try it out, right. and then they go ahead and do it. And then enough pe people that were curious were like, "Yo." That shit wasn't too bad. Right. <laughs> so then, uh, uh, then you'll get enough people saying, oh, start that's to not too down. bad. And then the sheep will come around. And then it's going to be normal once again. And then you'll only have like the few naysayers that said, oh, um, I'm still not with that. So it's really just a stupid concept for people to to um, talk badly about something sexual that's happening between a man and a woman. And you really... It's stuff like that, like, yeah, I understand it's stupid, and it's understandable, like, and everybody has their opinion, but I don't, like, play too much into it, because I know those are the same people that wait for enough people in society to right. say that it's okay, so that they're not in the social construct and um, limited to their own actions. Right. And it's so, almost like they have to wait for it to be, like, the in thing or the cool thing before exactly. they can try it. Exactly. It has to be a trend of some sort. So, I, that's why I don't, I don't, worry about what what people say like like i said I, when people go right i always go left because i like to start not necessarily start my own trend but i like to uh, move at my own speed at my own comfort and and do things my own way right. um when i feel like it like i feel necessary to do it um as far as it, it being the whole it's it's gay it's it's a tired it's a tired um it's a tired bullet point at this point. Like, mm -hmm. people. It's are, like, how many times do you have to drive home that whatever happens between a man and a woman, it's a yeah. heterosexual act. There's nothing gay or homosexual about it in any way, shape, or form, regardless of whatever it is that she's doing, Sam. Exactly. Like, me personally, I'm not into, like, um, I'm not into anal play for myself. Yes. Um, I've gotten my ass ate before. I'm like, it's cool, but it's not necessarily, like, my go-to. But right. for the next person that does it, it's just like, literally is no bother to me. Right. I, I don't understand the the concern so much about someone else's sexuality because of how they're being pleased. Um, and it's funny that you say that because most men that I know say the same thing that you say. Like, if she does it, it's cool. If she doesn't, it's equally as cool. It's not something that I would ask for. If it's something that she enjoys, you know what I mean? Then by all means, but it's not It's not at the top of their list of things to have done to them necessarily. Yeah, and as, as far as like the women saying, oh, she's not a real woman and, and, and stuff like that, it's that just goes back into like the, the mindset that you're in is being suffocated sexually. Yes. And now because 
it's it's not part of like how you think it, your thought process you you feel like it's got to be wrong there's only got to be one thing to have this type of sexual experience and it's like yo you're really limiting yourself because you literally have your whole body and nerve endings and pleasure points like to do so much with but you're just mm -hmm. <laughs> limiting yourself to dick vagina and that's it kissing tongue breast and it's like there's so much more that you could be exploring well but it's funny there's a, a couple that i came across um a few years back where she was um very sexually open and she ended up marrying a man who for whatever reason was not so much so that he limited their sexual like he limited their sex to um missionary I think it was I think he actually just limited their sex to missionary because he considered all other positions to be positions that sluts and whores did you know he didn't eat pussy he wouldn't let her suck his dick like he didn't want none of that because for him it was just like the literally the biblical type of sex and anything outside of that is again like what whores and, and sluts did and he's like you're my wife he can't be doing that. You're not a whore. You know what I mean? And and so, like, in conversation, it's one of those things where it's like, so what are you going to do? You know, how do you Cheat. literally regress and go backwards? Cheat on him. That should be from on that. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, see, I, you know, I say, but this is why people get bun in their relationship. This is why, not always, but things like this is why, because it, it's like if, if you and I are married, you and I are in a relationship, you are supposed to be the person that I'm able to try these things with. You are supposed to be the person that I'm able to explore with. Like, if not with you, then who the fuck am I doing it with? Johnny down the street. <laughs> Johnny come lately when my husband's gone to work. But you know, like you know, seriously. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I wanted to also ask you, what uh, are there still sexual taboos in society? Do you think that there are still sexual taboos that exist? Like with with the influx of everything that we have exposure to. You know, like there's porn in abundance. There are sex shops in abundance, physically and online. Um, you know, we we there are sex shows, there are sex expos. At this point, do you really feel like there's anything that is super taboo sexually anymore? Um, I mean, as long as it's not illegal. Um, do you think we're too over-sexualized as a society? Uh, I, I don't... Mm, I, feel, I feel like it's, it's getting to... It's getting to an interesting place to where... Where it's, it's a, a fine line between over-sexualized and sexually aware. Okay, so, explain. Um, as in in comparison to the past, we're way more sexually aware um, than we were, and we're more and more sexually open, especially with women having like much more. Not saying they have a lot of sexual freedom because mm. you know it's still that they can work on, but it's it's a lot more than it used to be. True. Um, in in my opinion. Um, but it gets to the point where the 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 sexual like in the windows and the, the sexual hints in a, a lot of things is way more vast than it used to be. Right. So, like, because even if you look at you go to a bar and you order a drink, you can order like an orgasm. You can order a sex on the beach. You can order, yeah. you know, whatever. So it's like, yeah, it's or definitely broadened out. Or even to take it uh, another step, there used to be like um, sexual hints in like cartoons. Right. Right. And we used to watch those cartoons not knowing any better, but now the the hints in the cartoons are a bit more obvious. Right. Than they used to be. Like, say for instance, I was just watching a cartoon on Netflix, and um, there was a, a part where the girl, it's, it's a guy and a girl, 
and they're on a ferris wheel and like they're on this like whole adventure and the girl goes oh i just want to let you know that um i like you and he's like oh like oh i'm not really with that and she was like oh you don't like me he's like no it's not that it's just that i'm gay and it's just like oh i was actually happy to like hear him like say that like straight right. up but before you wouldn't hear never boom character just never <laughs> And never that's, like, that's what we're getting more of where right. it's just like blatantly right straight up saying and not like a hint or in the window or yeah like there's nothing like, subtle anymore yeah exactly so i feel like that's what i'm saying where it's it, it it's it's really just that fine line um to where now it's opening up more to um sex is being opened up more at a younger age right um and I, I don't know personally where it can be uh, an over-sexualization in comparison to be more of a sexual awareness. Mm -hmm. But I will say sex is a lot more out there and a lot more prominent than it used to be. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what else is really taboo still. Um, My concern always with it is that we we end up going to the extreme of normalizing things that we know we shouldn't, like bestiality, for example. Like, I'm great with whatever type of sex, but for me, that's like a hard draw in this, you can do that, you know what I mean? Like, that kind of stuff. Um, oh, yeah, that's what I was saying, anything that's like really illegal, like um, uh, children and animals. Right. Under but I f almost feel like, you know, in some, and I hope that that never happens, but I feel like, you know, in, in such an effort to be, I don't even know if inclusive is the right word, but to try to, you know, normalize everything that somehow that those kind of things slip under the radar in some really kind of weird way, that's, you know, that's, that's what's always going to happen. Um, that's why inclusion is really such a, a blessing and a curse mm -hmm. because in a space where people that and and it's so funny because it's like then people can look at you and say who are you to say what right. should be included and what should it so in a space where in a space where everybody is is fighting for their voice and their right to be heard or viewed um you're gonna get those those that are like, well, I'm into this weird stuff, or they might say like, oh, I think what you think is weird, I think is normal. Right. What I what you think is normal, I think is weird. So why can your weird stuff go through, but my weird stuff can't? Right. So and uh and and that's what you're gonna get. But there literally is got to be somewhere where we gotta draw the line. And I feel like um, children and animals without children, without equivocation. Yeah. Because. It depends on the communication. They can't communicate to you that with with the proper knowledge and maturity right. that this is what they want to do. So you're now taking advantage. And I know, I feel like in a space where you can kind of take advantage of a situation mm -hmm. or you have um, power over a situation, then you you have to be very careful about including that in as or normalizing it as everything else so yeah of course i mean and then there was uh, i think last year a few years ago there was a um a whole meeting or a seminar or, or an event where people were trying to normalize um pedophiles and saying that pedophiles with the whole umbrella of them and that they're just people too, and they can't control themselves. And it was just like, no, no, <laughs> no, absolutely not. Yeah. So it's it's, See, it's, weird. it's it's like people like that though, like they will forever continue to try to push their agenda or, or try to push it to um, to try to normalize it. But mm -hmm. that's that's a, that's a definite hard no. That'll forever be off the table, forever. Exactly. Oh, uh, I mean, it's going to be off the table till it's on the table. So we'll you have to see how it goes. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. So because you're so sexually open, what has been your biggest channel ch uh, challenge with women? 
Like, have you ever had any issue with somebody like seriously not understanding your sexuality or how sexual you are? Um, or even have you been in a relationship where the woman is like, okay, you have to be doing something with somebody else because nobody is this sexual and just with one person. Um, yeah, I, I get that. And I still get that um, to this day. Um, I more so get intimidation. Really? Yeah, because a woman um, sort of feel like before I, I didn't really necessarily have a platform where I can speak about it so open and everybody can see like how sexual I am. Right. Um, now that I do, and now that it's like more prominent and aware, uh, women tend to feel more intimidated because it's like, oh, they have a sexual comfort, but to a certain level or to a mm-hmm. certain degree. And it's like, how do I keep up with his or how do I even keep his interest if I'm not into like those things? Right. Um, the way the way I go about it is I understand that we're all different. No, not everybody's going to be on a level that I am. So I accept people for who they are and whatever level that they feel like they can achieve or they can get to. And instead of instead of um, placing an expectation on them to mm-hmm. be on my level, I accept them for theirs. And then I just you come back down to their level. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's basically me coming down to their level. But, but doesn't that hinder you then? Um, or do you just decide that there are sort of things that you can, that you're okay not having or not doing? Yeah, it, I mean, it somewhat does hinder me, but at the same time, I'm more of a pleaser. So if okay. I come down to their level, if I come down to their level, Mm-hmm. And I know I can handle their level, and I see that I'm, I'm, um, they're getting the most out of us being at their level, or they're peaking at their level, right? And we're having such a good time, and they're really, really, really enjoying it. It makes then you're okay. me feel okay. a lot better, and it pleases me that okay. much more. So that's why I'm okay with it. And when I finally get to come across someone that's at my level. Yeah. Like it's <laughs> fireworks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, but thank I'm you, more, Lord. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I'm more of a teaser anyway. So right. I'm more so always thinking about the other person than myself. So it's it's perfectly fine. It's not something that I like I I like make them feel a way about or I try to make right. them feel comfortable as, as possible about it. So have you ever encouraged a woman to kind of push herself a little bit and then it backfired? Um, I don't, I, I wouldn't necessarily say like it backfired. It was more so just a, okay, I tried it. I'm not there yet, but I know what I can do to get there or right. I'll get there at some point. So I feel like a backfire would be like, oh, no, now I know for sure. Like, I'm not <laughs> right. We're I'm not, not fucking with that at all. But, right. yeah. It, um, it, Have you ever created a stalker? If I ever had a stalker? Have you ever created a stalker based on you being... No, <laughs> no really? I haven't. Um, not a stalker, but, like, I've, I've gotten, like, those women that just, like, can't let go yes. so when when you come across and this is like what they say to me when they come across somebody like me i'm i'm really what is going on? i'm really into balance and i'm a very balanced person so like right. there's a lot of different things about me that there is to like which puts me at a different like tier or different level than mm-hmm. most guys and because like in to them what they say is like the dating scene and, and a lot of dudes out there is like trash terrible to yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> come across me is like such a breath of fresh air right so it's just like then it's like okay now i want to keep you to myself like, <laughs> right. oh, slow, like, down. slow down <laughs> so then because it gets to the point where it's like oh i can't have, have you to myself then i just can't um i can't mess with you at all because really? it's gonna hurt too much to sit there and be like, I can't have you. Right. But then they, they, it's a, you can sometimes, because I can see it in their faces, like it's a fight within themselves to 
um, to stay away from me, but still hit me up from time to time to to see how I am or to see like, oh, are you ready now? Or maybe I still <laughs> want to fuck with you, even though I can't have you. Right. It's 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 really comical um, at some point. It's but what can you do? Okay. Um, so I have a surprise kind of game that I want to play with you. Yeah. So on my podcast, I do a thing called the hot seat. Mm-hmm. Um, so the longer version of the hot seat is uh, you have 30, so five minutes to answer 30 questions. If you lose, then you have to sing a song for me or do a sexy dance. And if you win, then you mm-hmm. can either ask me any question that you want to ask me and that I have to answer or you can choose to have me do a song, and I, I can't sexy dance, so that's off the table. <laughs> <laughs> but um, in this format, within the podcast discussion or within this discussion, uh, there's no timer. It's just uh, 10, 11 questions that I'm going to ask you, and, uh, you know, you got to answer. All right. You down for it? Yes. Okay, cool. Question number one. What is your number one relationship pet peeve? Uh what is my number one relationship pet, pet peeve? peeve. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just said this recently too. Being ignored. Okay. What rule did you hate following as a kid that would make your own kids follow? What rule would I hate following as a kid? Uh, curfew. Okay. Uh, your mother comes home with your best friend and tells you that they're dating now. What's your next move? Minding my business. <laughs> Are you more like Batman and the or the Joker, and why? More like Batman, because no matter how how much wrong you've done, um, or how bad you are, I won't change my moral values because of it. Okay. If you could change one physical characteristic about yourself, what would it be? Permanent abs. Tired of, tired of working for them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is the first physical characteristic that draws your attention when looking at a woman? Their imperfection. Oh, okay. High sex, tipsy sex, or sober sex? Tipsy. Okay. You're in jail on death row. What's your last meal request? My last known request? Your last meal request. My last meal request? Um... Surf and turf. Okay. What's a kink that you've wanted to try but have not as yet? Bondage. Or okay. some sort of BDSM. Okay. If you had to choose between doing a strip tease in front of 20 women in a home for the elderly or running through an empty stadium butt naked, which would you choose? You said strip. What was the first strip tease in a home of elderly? Yes. Of all women? Yeah, in a home for the elderly in front of 20 women. Um, yeah, that one. Because <laughs> you're trying to give some old ladies a heart attack? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the last question. If you could host a dinner party with any four people, living or dead, who would you invite? I would invite um, Bob Marley, hey. Diana, Will Smith, and... Oh man, the last one would be. Mm. I would probably choose a porn star or a sex worker. I'm not sure which one I would choose. Now that would be an interesting room of people, and that conversation would definitely be interesting. Oh, uh, or actually, no, I choose um, I choose Celine Dion. Celine, really? Mm-hmm. So Princess Diana, Celine Dion, Bob Marley, and Will Smith? Yeah. That's a very interesting mix. Why Celine Dion? Jamaicans love Celine Dion. You know what? I was just about to say to you that's a Yachty thing because, yeah, right. I forgot about it. Kenny Rogers and Celine Dion are like the two icons in Jamaica for some very strange reason. Her voice is great. I know every dance I've ever gone to, they have to bust a one-two Celine Dion song. 
and everybody gets in their feelings and is singing their hearts out. <laughs> That's what everybody turns into a singer. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Orlando, thank you so much. Thank you very, very, very much for doing this episode with me. I appreciate your insight and your thoughts and the conversation and discussion. Please let everybody know where they can find you, follow you. Do you have any events that are coming up? Anything that you want to plug and promote? Please go ahead. Okay. All right. Bear with me here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for my fitness page, it's a five star games on Instagram. Um, listen to So Shameless Podcast on anywhere you can listen to a podcast. Listen to Hello White People yes. on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Audio Mac. Um, also go on YouTube and type in hello, comma, white people. And we have a video project as well as the podcast, nice. um, beyond the bar music on YouTube. Check it out. It's very, very interesting. Uh, what else is this? Oh, if you want to watch my only fans, it's only fans.com slash dear Orlando Roy. That's D E A R O R L A N D O R O Y E. And you can follow me on Instagram at or Twitter at Daryl Lando Roy. Okay. Uh, um, and all that information will be posted uh, once the episode goes live. All the information will be posted with every single one of your links so they can just click on it and get to you. Yes. Okay. And yes. I, of course, am your host, AJ Badass Jones. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you to the Pom Pom Posse. You can find me on my social media. My personal page is badass underscore jones underscore um the podcast page is the pum pum chronicles pod you can find me on youtube also at the pum pum chronicles pod and i'm on twitter at tpp tpp chronicles if you want to email me any questions feedback or anything of that nature you can find me at the pum pum chronicles all one word at gmail.com big up yourself mr jamaica <laughs> <laughs> Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate having you. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored.